Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for uh, bringing us together in unity this afternoon to explore that which you have set before us, to understand and to uh, gather in and, and understand what we are to do in the uh, coming times, Father. We thank you so much for the people that are so steadfast and um, have put their heart and soul into uh, gathering this knowledge and information from thee and uh, so willing to share it with us. With this, Father, we pray that you'll open our hearts and our minds, our ears, that we may hear all that you would have for each one of us, and then collectively as a body, to uh, be ready for uh, times ahead, and to always, uh, day by day, stay in love and prayer for one another as we move forward in this journey with thee. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Sorry, it took me a while to get back to the mic, but absolutely, Marcia, thank you so much for that precious and meaningful opening prayer. The need for Zion has existed from the beginning. God designed for it to be, Zion being the kingdom on the earth, and we had a remarkable sermon about the kingdom on the earth this morning, uh, more of which I'll try to relay to you later in the week. But it's always been there. Enoch established it at one time, and it was a real operating uh, infrastructure and city. Uh, we are called in the last days, or reminded in the last days, the kingdom on the earth has been referred to in the scriptures, in all scriptures, and at all times. In the recent days, in recent days, like in the last 190 195 years, uh, you might say the restoration, Christ speaking again, didn't give us any new commandments, but he did reiterate his old commandments and make very clear what our duties are for today, and one of them is the establishment of Zion, in other words, the establishment of the kingdom of heaven on the earth. This time for the purpose of those who will obey the Lord and those beleaguered of the world, those needing justice and honesty and righteousness, whether they've heard of the Lord or not, having the hearts and souls that will listen to Jesus and that he can work with and rely on for this place of safety and refuge. I think this place of safety and refuge has been Brian and Diane and Maverick's duty since they before they were on the earth and they have responded to his call and they're very serious their hearts are all about it they're involved in a group that they will tell us about uh, and they're very 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 prepared very um, organized so they will tell a little bit more about themselves I'm going to turn it over to them, leave it to them. It'll take a while. I'm so grateful that this is being recorded in live stream because it's, I think it's such an important thing, even though there's very, very few of us here. Um, God wants all those that will to listen. I'm very privileged to be among this small group. Brian, Diane, and Maverick. Well, some of you know us, some of you don't. Uh, my name is Ma or Maverick. <laughs> That's my son. My name's Ryan Nichols. This is Diane Nichols. And Maverick's handing out the uh, paper that we're going to talk about today. Um, a brief introduction. I grew up in Independence, born in Iowa. Graduated William Christman High School. 
Um, Eagle Scout, let's see what else. I am a priest in the Community of Christ organization. We're one of the, uh, we're part of one of the last remaining conservative congregations in the area. So we still teach the original principles of the gospel. We haven't diverted off of that whatsoever. Um, we got married 25 years ago and we've been preparing almost ever since we were married. So I'll let Diane share a little bit more about her. Uh, I grew up in Texas in Houston area and um, one of the families that gathered in uh, when I was eight. So yeah, um, gathered in um, always been a part of the church since I, you know, was born and um, very faithful, very scriptural. Uh, have always had a testimony that, uh, you know, we are here to prepare for the end, and that is our calling. So um, our life has kind of always been, you know, what skills, what things can we do uh, to prepare, you know, people to be with uh, being aware of what's going on in the city and those type of things. So, anyway, we have a lot to share. So, I do want to get started. Do you want to do the first part? Uh, Maverick's coming back. He's our oldest son. He is grown up with dad saying, always be ready, always be alert, always be, always be on guard. So uh, he just handed you guys a two-page document. We're going to go over that. Um, I know there's going to be questions. We'd like to get through our presentation before we answer questions. So if, if you guys could help us with that, that would be good. Um, we divided this into spiritual and physical. So the front page is going to cover spiritual aspects and having yourself spiritually ready for things to come. The, uh, I want to ask a question right away, though, right off the top. If we were to have an event happen right now, as we're sitting here, how many of you are ready for that event? If something happened right, right now, now, like say an EMP went right now, or Tornado, I don't know, whatever. Earthquake happens right now. So uh, what shoes are you wearing? Are are you able to get home? Just first step. Can you get home? Okay, okay, so if I can drive, I can get home. If you can't drive, can you get home? Do you so, have enough supplies in either on you here at the church or in your car to get home for water or food? Because if somebody lives, you know, in Grain Valley, that's a pretty good hike. I, I don't know where everybody's going. Or those arcs. <laughs> I, I just realize, I mean, we have, we live six miles away from this location. Um, I know some of us live. What, what are you, about 17 miles from here? 16, 17? Maybe. To your place? Yeah. So that may take more than a day to walk home. Or, I get yeah. Right. So just thinking about a simple thing like that, of we're here at church in relatively... A safe location but if something were to go chaotic yeah sideways this neighborhood goes sideways as well but at least right now we're in a community we can like uh, we have extra water in our car because this is something we are ready for so we could be like all right does everybody have some water and we could we could share but we need to be the people that are ready to to share and, and have it, because I'm gonna guess a lot of people are not prepared for what's to come. 
And I know many people are here have read the Ballantine um, testimonies, but have also may have testimonies of themselves or definitely have heard probably since you were born all the testimonies of the end times. So um, it's it's getting to be that time. So. So I talked about Maverick a little bit, always being prepared, and I kind of tease him a little bit now, but I understand because he has me as a dad. Um, he won't wear anything but boots. It's true. It's true. If he's not in cargo pants, he's in a church. He's going to church because that's the only time he's not wearing cargo pants. Yep. He probably has a minimum of two flashlights on him. He has more than one pocket knife on him. He probably has a pad of paper, a pen. Um, I, do you have paracord on you right now? I have shoelaces. Okay. So just, how about a fire starter? I, um, I think I stole that from stole you, didn't that I? You stole that one, but I could figure it out. But... So batteries in my flashlight to make fire. The reason we go over these things is because I mean, we were we just stopped a quick trip before we came over and he's looking at the people going in and out of quick trip and he's like, all right, he's got basketball shorts on and flip flops. Right. And he's oblivious. That's another part of being prepared is being aware of what's going on around you. Because if I don't need to be in the situation, I can leave, right? If, I, if, I, if there's a, a threat, if you will, I don't have to stay there. I can leave, right? Unless that threat engages me, and then there's a whole different protocol. The best fight to have is one you don't have to engage in. Can you hear that online? You probably didn't. So he said the best, would you go get over here? The best fight to have is one that you don't have to engage in. So if you already see there's a threat before, then you can leave the situation before it is a problem. So just So we're gonna jump so that that's kind of the the kind of the first question. But we want to go over some spiritual preparedness before we get into the physical stuff. Because if your heart's not right, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're not hearing his voice right now, when things are calm and peaceful, you're not going to hear him when it's chaotic. You're not going to be able to focus hard enough or well enough to hear the still small voice that he oftentimes uses. More than often, he's talked to me in a still small voice. Other times he's used a two by four, right? But most of the time, it's the, the, the small, subtle push of the Holy Ghost. It's that small thought that is the one that we oftentimes ignore, right? So that's, that's where we need to focus in and help, help ourselves. So your discernment and bold faith will guide you when to run, when to hide, when to stand boldly, when to welcome others into your house or onto your land, or to turn others away that do not know the Lord, or to defend when necessary. So you need to pray, listen, and act. How many are willing to act? I hope all of you are, right? Um, rebellion. rebellion. There you go. Mm -hmm. So that he said passivity is rebellion. So we had, we were in our Sunday school class this morning, and our teacher was explaining how he had been asking the Lord all week, "Let me hear your voice. Let me act when you need me to act." So he gets a phone call Saturday afternoon with, I, with um, that fell again, I think, a call to go do an administration. So he hesitated for a minute. 
he had a busy, busy schedule. He had schedule. a busy schedule Saturday, right? Yeah. And then the call for administration came out. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll go do it. He went and did the administration and everything else went smooth the rest of his day. But that small hesitation is where mistakes can happen. And I'll just leave it at mistakes. <laughs> so we might pray, we have, have to listen, and then we have to act. Because if we're not acting, for instance, um, just, a, just a crazy scenario, because that's the way I think. I'm a quick trip. Well, actually, this was real life scenario. Um, I pulled up on a traffic accident two, three weeks ago, a truck had run over a lady. I pull up to the scene and trying to figure out what's going on. And as I'm going up to her, I see how critical she is. And I asked the Heavenly Father, I said, would you like me to heal her? Immediate response was no. What would you like me to do? Take care of everybody else. About a minute later, paramedics were showing up. They were taking care of her. I was taking care of the rest of the family. And then the police officers showed up. And then it was time for me to leave. But it's those, and, and those weren't like loud two by four things. It was, do you want me to, no. It was just a whisper, no, okay. Next, what would you like me to do? Take care of the family, take care of the bystanders. Get them out of the way so paramedics can work. Okay, got it. So when the paramedics got there, all they had to do was go to her. They didn't have to solve anything else before they got to her. So pray, listen, act. Uh, the next part on our little paper um, is some examples, and I'm only going to read the last line. You guys can review those parts. Um, all of these examples heard the voice of God and followed his warnings and directions and had to evacuate. So we have Noah, Moses, Lehi, brother of Jared, which we, we know, all know their stories. Um, if you need references to find them, to review them. Um, but they had to evacuate. They needed to listen to God's voice to get that guidance to get out of wherever they were. All right. We are already seeing birthing pains of the kingdom. When we start seeing the judgments, many are going to be looking for answers. If you are prepared, you will be helping those that God sends your way. If you are not prepared, you will be like everyone else, questioning and searching, not only for God, but for basic needs like shelter, clothing, food, and water. There are a couple scriptures uh, to note uh, to flee to Zion. I think many of us have read them over and over, so uh, there's... The references there, DNC 4513A, DNC 1084A, and the armor of God. I hope we're all putting on our armor daily, um, but I don't, I hope that you don't just be like, oh, um, pray for the armor on, which is awesome, but if you're not acting in truth, then you didn't put the belt on. So you can be like, Lord, put the belt of truth on me, but like you need to be acting in truth and being truthful to have the belt of truth on or to have the shield of faith. Um, then you need to be boldly doing faithful things and acting in faith to have the, the shield of faith. So anyway, armor is really important, but there's actions within to receive the armor, you need to have those actions of faith as well. So adding, so adding to the armor, I know we talk about it, I know there's sermons on it, I know we've all learned it. It was uh, probably two or three years ago that I was asking for that to be put on every day. And then, then I realized is once I have it on, it's on. There is no taking it off. 
it's on. So instead of put it on every day, my prayers change to refresh and renew it, reinforce it. Right, remember that it's on. I mean, we're reminded daily that it's on, unfortunately, <laughs> because of what we're called to do as a family, um, which is stand in the gap for a lot of other people. So ours never comes off, or at least mine does. I don't know about you and you, but mine, mine's always there. Um, <clears throat> some dreams of other saints that have happened over the past that have been recounted to us. Um, there are several of tanks going down streets. Like military tanks going down the streets. Have anybody heard dreams? I think I have four people and they're not even um, related to each other and, and they're old dreams. So anybody heard of that one? Yeah. Yeah. Praying for the cloak of invisibility, you're praying for invisibility, you're praying for protection that the oncoming army or tank would not see you or your home. So that's the boldness we have to step in. You need to start preparing your mind to see the tanks going down the street or, you know, hypothetical situations that could become real. Um, that you know that you can put on the cloak of invisibility and... Um, be invisible to the enemy so there's uh, four or five so we've added that cloak of invisibility to our armor that's always with us um, the other one is the mantle of humility we use that one as well um, so another another experience was that was shared with us was a dome over his people just like an invisible shield that's upon us. And there's many scriptures, even like in Psalms 91, where he's got, you know, his wings over us. Or uh, So there's many dreams that people have had um, of that protection that the Lord will put upon his people. So if it's a dome, if it's his wings, if it's whatever, that um, we have the faith to ask for that protection we can do that. We can do that. And so when we get to those points, if you are not prepared, I mean, it's just like practicing um, like any sport or whatever. You, you prepare for different scenarios that you need to prepare to, to do these bold prayers. And I think the Lord is providing all these weird opportunities and strange situations that we're all in right now that's creating those learning opportunities so that we are learning those boldness that uh, we got to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. Pray in faith. We are going to see the worst in humanity come out. We've already seen that in mob mentality throughout the last four years off and on and that was just politically motivated that wasn't even when hunger hit or thirst hit or they were trying to defend their family or protect anything they just wanted something um, so when those things get involved neighborhoods are going to get really dicey neighborhoods are going to get really dicey um, so Just be, be alert. That's why it's the pray, listen, and act. If you can get out of the situation before it becomes a situation, it's much better. Thank you. All right, so uh, the Valentine testimonies, uh, there's one part, I don't know how many you've read. Um, I got a packet that had 21 of them in it. Anybody get that one or? The Valentine testimonies, because okay. some packets have gone around that only had a couple, but um, it's one of the later ones. It said that Kansas City is a f going to be a field of flowers. So if you think about the way it is, how do we get from here to there is a lot of change and a lot of loss, a lot of hard times to get from here to there. So. 
All right, next section is on spiritual guidance. Um, I am big into learning about this strength and authority that uh, we have right now. Um, it's one of my big studies and my push with myself to be more uh, using my authority that I have. So uh, number, or number, you know, the first one there is speak to your mountains. So if you do have a mob or some evil of some sort approaching you, you have the authority to speak to that. Um, it's the same with healing too, that you don't have to stop and say a prayer to God and it ends up being a prayer. So I hate to say it that way, but it's not like, dear heavenly father, I need you to help with this mob. It's you have an authority with the mob or whatever situation just an example like in the name of jesus stop and you can put your hand up and use your authority or in the name of jesus knee be healed you're speaking to it so that authority has got to come from within everything we have because the lord handed that over to us so let's um be bold and pursue that authority so um that is a speak to the mountain not go the route of through the prayer I, it ends up still being a prayer it's just a more uh, direct prayer i guess so so out of mark chapter 16 there's a couple of verses we'll read here really quickly he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Is that, yep, that's where yep. it ends. So he gave us that authority as believers, as members. Right. So I know in the past and I know we will in the future, we've we've called on the elders a lot for administrations. And we will still need that function. But what this tells me right now in Mark. Anybody that is a member and a believer in Jesus Christ can do those things that we just read. It it's not a priesthood responsibility. The member has the most important role in our faith in the body of Christ. So, it doesn't matter if me as a priesthood member pulled up on a traffic accident and I'm asking the question, can I heal them? It, it, it could have been any of you pulling up on the accident. I mean, I, it could have been, I, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm just pointing to you, <laughs> Debbie. So it could have been Debbie. You could have pulled up to that traffic accident, got out of your car, went to that woman, and you could have had the same conversation with Heavenly Father that I did. And maybe the answer would have been different. I don't know. But the point is, is that we have the authority through Christ and we're not using it. I know. It's in the, so we've been told multiple times the same thing and we're still not using it. So it's, so a comment from the audience, it's Nephi's final exhortation. exhortation. Baptism coming unto Christ, you can have the same power, have the visions of Nephi, have the visions of Nephi, and so Right. So we have that ability right now. I'm going to make a broad, I'm going to make a very, not broad, bold suggestion. Start practicing right now. We have a short window of opportunity that we can hone in on our skills. Start practicing these skills. Do you think it's important? Because you didn't just use your authority to heal her. 
No, I, I asked the question. Sorry. We'll get a microphone. We got microphones for our audience. So just pass, give to Debbie. So it sounds like you did not just go uh, come upon that accident and heal her. No. You asked. I asked. So it sounds to me like it's important for us to not just, but to ask the Lord. Right. Should I, whatever it is that we're thinking should happen ask right. him well and, when I, and expect him to to prompt us right one way or the other yeah yeah i would be expecting a prompting anytime and i was i don't pull up to traffic accidents and think of that thought on my own so this is because i've been trying to understand and reason this out right because i've been raised forever that the elders come to heal people right <laughs> so this is this is a change in my thinking in my understanding of what what christ has told us you can do all of these things and more in my name right let's stop being passive let's stop being passive um I don't want you to raise your hand, but I want you to take note. I'm going to read these slowly so that you can hear them. In my name shall they cast out devils. So are you casting out devils? Just make note of it yourself. Cast out devils. Are you speaking in tongues? I am not yet, but I'm going to be praying hard for this one. This is the, the one I want to work on next. Um, they shall take up serpents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, if, okay. and if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. So think about the things that are going in our bodies. Some people are required um, to have things in their body. I'll, I'll just leave it generically. Um, uh, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I love how y'all uh, pray over each other in this group. Um, when you prayed over our, uh, us uh, last week and, and even previous times, you gathered around, you put your hand on us. How powerful that is. I think that's amazing. So you already have those steps and you have the faith to do that. So proceeding forward in that faith. Um, all right, so that's on. So just make note, what do you need to pray for? What do you need to work on? And deeply pursue those because the only thing it said is, uh, he that believeth and is baptized. I think, I don't know everybody in the room, but I think um, probably everybody here is baptized and that you believe. So we gotta work on that big time. All right. Uh, take note of your gifts and talents. Uh, there was a good sized group of us that we um, went through the gifts, spiritual gifts in uh, First Corinthians um, and many others, uh, in many other scriptures, and we wrote down what spiritual gifts we all have and even physical talents that we all have. We have a huge data packet that we created um, so that we know who we would call if we need something in particular or um, who we can turn to you. You can do it within your family, you can do it within your congregation, you can do it among this group or, or however, but I think it would be wise if you knew who has the gift of prophecy, who has, you know, all the, all the gifts. So. But even go down to who can cook for large gatherings. That is a skill. Not everybody can do that. So even getting down to the, um, the physical needs, who's a nurse? Who can, you know, take care of a wound? Not everybody can do that, so anyway. Um, fresh repentance, that means 
keeping track of everything and caught up daily on all all the sinning we have done. So uh, fresh repentance. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Uh, unity with his people. Oh, that's a good one, isn't it? Unity with his people. We're working on that right now. Because I believe in this group, we don't all go to the same congregation. And we're kind of a mix, a mixed breed. Is that a good term, I guess? Outcasted, no, well, well peculiar. peculiar, there you go. Yep. So I, I, we, we attend, like I said, one of the last five conservative groups of what used to be the RLDS church, which goes by the community of Christ, right? But we have Jesus Christ in common. That is the common denominator. And in the Book of Mormon, it says there's only going to be two churches. You're either with Christ or you're not. So, so we're already uniting. We're already here, right? Right. <laughs> right. Uh, we already visited a little bit about listening to the small, s small whispers and guidance from the Lord, the Holy Ghost working with you, the still small voice. And then the whole point of why we're here, sorry, <laughs> is, is the goal of having a Zionic community, right? That's the whole purpose why we're still here. It's the whole purpose we're in the center place. That's the whole purpose we're in Jackson County. Independence is the kingdom, right? If it wasn't for that, I don't think I'd be here. R right. One heart and one mind in the midst of a tragedy around us. But it's also the reason I feel like it was we were invited to even teach this was when we mentioned that um, the, the question was asked last week, uh, do we, do we have any, or whatever well, at our house? it was a question to our house of, do you have any projects that need to be done? Okay. And our response was no, because we won't be there, especially if. Mike Ballantyne's statements are true. It doesn't matter what project you do at my house. It's not going to matter because we're bugging out. Meaning our house is not our final location. We're leaving because of what's happening. Put your microphone on. Are you bugging out of independence? No. Good. No. We have, we're going to stay local, but I have two other locations that I need, if I need, three, if I need to go to, if Jackson County gets to. There may be a time when crazy. we have to flee from this area for it to be cleansed. So I would definitely have different levels of bug out. Like maybe it's your neighborhood's out. Maybe it's the city is out. Maybe it's uh, the county area or whatever. So maybe have three different levels or places to head out to. Um. We just know we're not going to be at our house. So if you think about coming to my house, I won't be there to help you. <laughs> help yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She has a question. bag packed would you recommend you have a winter bag oh and a she's getting bag? into the physical stuff already <laughs> that's awesome we're headed so right next, there next page um hold on to that question we will answer it yes we already did that did you go over the one heart one yep heart? did that yes okay cool so in the midst of tragedy this is where our tight level of one heart and mind will come because if you think of people who go through hard, rough situations together, they have a different, unique bond than any other that's gone before. I mean, any marriage that started out really rough, you wouldn't believe how tight their marriage is. I mean, just as an example, or you think of a friend of yours that you did something tough or you went to war together or you did something, that bond, one heart and one mind. <laughs> so... Um, Yep. That's right. And last time I checked, there's not an atheist in a foxhole, so share your testimony with everybody. 
Um, All right, we're going to flip over the page. Over the back where it says physical at the top. Community is key. There is safety in numbers. And then the who, what, when, where, and why. Which is why we're leaving our house. Um, there's a group of people that have the same mindset and goals as we do. And we have worked together to prepare and to teach each other. We've learned what everybody's um, gifts and talents are. Um, we've had intentional meetings together. Um, if there's a sale on... Chicken. We all buy <laughs> chicken at the same time. Yeah. Or... Um, or buckets or whatever it is. Yeah. The call goes out, hey, you need a five-gallon bucket? Yeah, I need ten. Okay, or we're like going to the store. What you guys did last week with the water containers. With the water container. That would be something we've done before. So community is so important. And so um, I would work towards the community. Yeah. What's your plan for communication? Which level? Do I still have well, phone just, service or not? Just, just in initiating the bug out to whatever predetermined location. Uh, if my phone goes dark right now, we're gone. And that's that's the signal for everybody else. That yes. that's that's the signal for basically everybody else. So meaning, what I mean by that is, if these lights go out and this microphone stops working and the computer stops working, an EMP goes off. Well, no. Then if all of that happens, I turn on my phone, right? If I can turn it on to a screen and I can activate it and go to my next screen, then I'm not in an issue. I'm not in a bug out issue. It could just be the powers out. It could out. just be the powers out. But if I do that and if all of this happens and then my phone doesn't activate, my phone stays here and I leave. Now, why would you want your phone to stay here? Because. We're just going to say because. We'll talk later offline if you want to know the reason. So, well, in that scenario, wouldn't the phone just be dead anyway? Uh, possibly, yes. but there's always that. Well, I mean, just the electronics of it have been fried. So you're talking about if we're talking a true EMP, yes, but they have practiced turning everything off and then they'll turn it back on later to see where to see what happened. you did. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yes. So no then, phones. yeah, no phones. No phones. Um, so community is key. So the next kind of column area there is who's in your group or community so we didn't fully answer um so there's like ham radios you could use those if they still work okay. or um we may get to a point where it's spiritually talking to each other because there's sometimes when there's an issue at church or whatever and you can have a conversation with somebody else before there's an issue but you don't have to say a single word so that's where the one heart and one mind comes in place because in a bigger scenario, if you don't have means of communication, you'll have to be spiritually in tune with God and the other person so you can communicate without saying anything. Also, there's like lights you could use or mirrors or flags to communicate from distance, saying stuff like that. So. Yes, yes, we no, have. We won't use those. But those um, people can see from miles away, so those aren't usually the best, but yeah. Our congregation actually put together a banner so that um, if something did happen, they could hang the banner in a certain direction so we could know if they need food or supplies. Um, or to say if they're there. If they need medical help if there's an enemy on site or close by and if they're not there rather than, going out the rather than me going to the door right. 
So we can drive by it right now. So, so if we went in the nighttime and was able to walk by or drive by or whatever, um, we would know from a distance what their need is without Without talking. With, yeah. And But you could do that the with distance a small group is the of key. people. And transportation. Well, that's yeah. okay too. And that's part of our little conversation here is is you know who's in your group or community is this it for zion's work or is it bigger than this, this is so this is the core group right now who's the leader or final decision maker is there one we're all chiefs, we're all <laughs> love it well, I'm just, these are just things to think about because when chaos hits, who's the one that makes the last decision? Meaning, meaning, um, if for some reason Steve hasn't made it, and I know his route to our bug out location, for instance, and he hasn't shown up yet, and we're three days into the crisis, somebody needs to go find Steve. Who's that somebody that goes find Steve is number one, and then who makes that call to send that runner to go find Steve? Right. So there's for our our group, our community that we've already prepared with, those decisions have already been made. It's, it's bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> we, so we have a route that right now we drive, and we have several in the congregation that, that may not be able to leave, right? So then it's how do I get to those people to safety? Or do they even want to come to safety? Do they want to be in their home? Can they? Can they leave? So there's all of these questions, but that's, so who takes care of medical? Is there any nurses or doctors in the group? Okay. Kim's a nurse. Anybody really good with first aid? So we can get through some basic things, right? Question? Yeah, I don't want to interrupt you. Uh, we have, uh, right there. Yeah, we've, we've, it's on. It's on. Uh, okay. Yeah, we've done that in the past. We've got a list of who, whose specialties are, are what. Good. Awesome. And uh, we need to review it because membership has changed and some, we have new people and some people have passed away. Right. And um, so, yeah, that needs to be, and I need to remind you all that, you know, we can do that there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th that we need to redo it, but yeah, we've got a form that uh, people put in there. They write in their own specialty, and you know we don't try to categorize. Who know you? If we tried to make a whole list of whose specialty was what, the list would be ten pages long. Sure. So they write in what their specialty is. Right. And, and, you and uh, all those forms? well, you are the collecting point for all that, I assume. no, I'm not because two other people said they would do it and they dropped it. So and by default. by default, I will take that responsibility. So I'd be careful with who gets the list um, and then make sure those people that should have the list have the list as well. So make sure, yeah. get a chance I'd like to go back to the uh, unity uh, topic sure uh, may we I can mention? do that right now yeah well, let's do it okay um, what God wants he wants Zion and he wants no less than Zion right. that's from each of us as an individual and it's mm -hmm. as his group not our group not mm -hmm. our core group not yeah doesn't have it's not gonna have the name Zion works I don't know what it's gonna understand. have the name Zion and we're beyond the I think we're beyond the point of Zion Works at this point. We're, Zion is what's important. We came together, we called ourselves Zion Works because uh, we work together and 
there's work involved and it's God's work. And uh, so, but this is really about Zion mm -hmm. and Zion cannot be, I don't think it can be a little core group that centers itself that God's, God's word and God's invitation somehow has to go to the four quarters of the earth, has to go to every person who's innocent, you might say. Many of them aren't going to know about Jesus Christ, uh, but they, uh, they have the heart and the mind to be Zion. Uh, sure. They have the heart and the mind, and when they hear the gospel, they'll attach themselves to the gospel of Jesus. And when we come together, when those from the four quarters of the earth come together, we heard about this again today in a great message, It'll be a gathering at Jesus' feet, and our joy will be in Jesus Christ, not in our, our cultures. Uh, I mean, cultures right. are, I honor all, all cultures, and I think it's neat to meet people from all different cultures, and I love to uh, get to know people and try to figure out what makes them think the way they do and act the way they do. I'll never have it figured out, but it's fun trying. And I, I mean, I'm not the, I'm not the standard by which to judge people Jesus Christ is so we're looking forward to the and I know you are too so I'm just expressing the same yeah. thing you're expressing yeah. the absolute joy of coming together with our brothers and sisters from around the world from various cultures and languages uh, and we come together at Jesus feet and we know that we're brothers and sisters yeah. such a marvelous thing and it, it goes way beyond my understanding of the gospel and and you know my growing up the way I did it, it has to go way beyond that it has to be something we see and feel and understand in the spirit of Jesus Christ and then when this these people are drawn together remember, uh, regardless of if there's millions and millions or just a handful we know well we know as we are known you might say right that it's joyous coming together all these things that have restricted us before, uh, you might say religion, and that, that is not a condemnation of the gospel no. at all. Uh, but the, all barriers disappear, and it's mm -hmm. the joy of Jesus Christ and knowing that we're brothers and sisters that draws us together. So it, that has been uh, something that's really concerned me uh, because we, I think Jesus wants us all to come together we can't all come together at the same place every Sunday, but the knowing each other, uh, knowing that having that love for all these other groups, we don't know how they'll come together, but Jesus' love, Jesus' love is so important here. Right. Mm -hmm. So unity is a huge thing. We've been graciously accepted by you all. You don't know us very well. Right? Oh, but we have that joy. Right, we have, but we have that. And I don't want to think that. That, that common connector, Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. The commonality. The joy of that is, right. I can't describe it. And there's other groups that I'm involved in that have the same mindset of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right? Now, not everybody that heard about this meeting came to the meeting. And I don't know how many are going to watch it online. And I don't know how many are online watching, right? Um, but even not knowing that information, Christ is still asking us to be ready for anything and everything. Um, because through the chaos... He's going to need a people to stand up and be a light unto a really, really dark world. A really dark world. And, and we're watching it right now get darker as the moment passes. Um, but there'll be a gathering of all we've been hoping for to come. And that is so exciting. And it is the love of God that will... Uh, join us together. So it, it, this place will be packed with people, and um, mm -hmm. we have that responsibility as watchmen 
and as watchmen. Uh, I mean, can you imagine? Uh, what if you lived in Nebraska and you hiked all the way here? You will. What is it? They'll weep on each other, kiss, yep. kiss each other's necks. We will be doing that with the people that will be joining in. Um, and they'll want to know more about God if they don't have the fullness. And so we have to be prepared um, with the teachings. And, and some of us may be sent out to get those that are on the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's one of my responsibilities. Isn't that fun to figure out when you're 20 years old? You ever seen mothers and fathers? Yeah. So... I mean, it's going to take each one of us and for us to understand each other's skills and talents. I mean, I know my group, but I don't know you very well. And I don't know if you've had the full conversations yet either. So if you have, I apologize. I'm not trying to beat a, beat a, pro, a, a topic that's already been discussed. But the unity part is key, just like us meeting together and talking. This is unity because it's It's you getting to know us and us getting to know you. Now, Jonathan and I, we played basketball together back at CPRS. I went to William Crispin. I would go to fun nights at their place, and they would look at me astonished because I didn't back down from shooting over anybody in basketball. And Jonathan was a little bit bigger than I am, height-wise. So that guy will shoot over anybody. He doesn't care who he shoots over. Well, you don't, you can't win unless you shoot, right? But so there's been interactions throughout the years where, I mean, I know Woody's sister, Jackie, and I get to know Woody now. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's fun. We've met Susan a couple years ago. So our, our, our network of people is slowly increasing, but each one of us is involved in a different circle of the community overall right so um it's just it's just fabulous it's fabulous to see kind of goes with the body of christ i'm the thumb you're the toe (laughs) we're all in it together to make the body of christ um is it worth going down that list of who takes care of farming who does communication is it worth doing that to you guys No? Okay. Super. Um, Do you plan on, do you plan on sheltering in place? Is each individual family sheltering in place or are you planning on getting together as a group? Well, you talked about the cloak cloak of invisibility, so that that could pass for safety and sheltering in place, Mm -hmm. especially for the older people who don't have that much get up and go. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's part of it, but you also have supplies and other things that you may need. Yes. Which the Lord... But... but The Lord can... You you live close to each other? We don't live close to each other. Okay. Okay. Not carrying supplies. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about supplies for a minute. Your bug out bags. Uh, That's they're, for, <clears throat> they're for how many days? How, what's the duration for your bug? The, the location you're going to, I presume, is pre-stocked. Yes. Yep. Okay. And it will have other things arriving with those that are coming. Yeah. So... I'm going to jump down to the bottom. You see where it says rules of three, rule of threes, and it says it's under the extra ideas there, rule of threes, air, shelter, water, food. Well, there's also a time frame there for the rule of three. Three seconds, say a prayer, ask for guidance. Three minutes, you better, have, you better be moving, you better be acting. And the reason I say this, because in three hours the neighborhood is gonna start getting restless, okay? In three days, without food and water, they're gonna be going nuts. And they're gonna be looking for food and water wherever they can find it, okay? Panic, sorry. Three seconds, three minutes. Three seconds, three minutes. 
three hours, and three days. Three months. Three weeks, <clears throat> three months. They've done studies to show that in three months, when the grid goes down, it doesn't come up within three months, and it probably won't. 90% right. of the population will be gone. Right. There's also a rule of two. Yep. Yep. Two is one, one, one is, is none. none. That's why he carries two flashlights. That's why I have more than two flashlights. I've got three on me right now. Can you explain that? Okay, so we did grab some supplies from uh, the EOC of Independence Emergency Operations Centers. They have ready in three pamphlets if you guys need some. Uh, what I have on the table is my partial bag. It's not everything in my bag, but it's part of my bag. Um, you asked the question about a 72 hour kit or a backpack. Um, clothes, I usually rotate my clothes every six months. Like right now I have my summer clothes in there and in another bucket that goes with us if we have vehicles. I know. I know, you're gonna have to rotate kids. We had yes. six, um, so we get it. And then with them being so small, they can't carry their own load. Mm -hmm. so and their then, sizes are changing often. So, so um, yes, we understand that. So that's why, yes, my bag does change, but it's my bag. Now the kids, they had a box about that size and I had summer, spring, fall, winter clothing in it. But it was only one set of clothing. It wasn't like multiple. They they got pants in the summer, so they got four pants. You can survive with pants in the summer. You don't have to have shorts, right? They got four socks. They got four pairs of underwear. They had sweatshirt, t-shirt, layers, coat, gloves, hats. I mean, you have to go through that for yourself, right? Now, obviously, infant is different than... Jonathan, <laughs> right? Um, and then one thing that we did in our family as well is that the older kids that could carry more, they would carry two backpacks. So they'd have one on the front and one on the back. So they'd carry one of the smaller kids bags. Now the smaller kid had a smaller bag to carry so they had like a first aid kit, like, go ahead and fold mine up. So they'd be responsible to carry that, right? But everybody was carrying something if we were walking. Um, another thing we did with our group, so yes, multiple. It's planning for multiple scenarios because you don't know if you're gonna have a car. If you're not bugging out, I and think everybody should home. have a 72 hour kit, but um, if you're staying home, you know, are you ready with, if the power goes out and, you know, all those type of things, but um, at some point, everybody may need to evacuate. So I'd have different. So in my bag, I have a first aid kit. I have water. I have granola bars. I have personal safety protection stuff. Um, Toilet paper. So. A knife, a lighter. And not just, I mean, I have pocket knives, right? But this is more of a bushcraft knife to where I could cut through. So, yeah. We have the same taste. <laughs> so this is a Mora knife. Um, but yeah, it's a bushcraft knife. It's designed to cut through about two inches worth of material with a with a batten where you just pound through it. Um, fire starter. This is Maverick's lighter. You can have that back. But I had glasses that I used to wear all the time, and I've got them in the top of my bag actually. That you can use eyeglasses to start a fire. Surprise if you didn't know that. Um, my old hands, my old scout book, my Boy Scout handbook. This isn't for me. This is for the kids. 
because I have a lot of knowledge that I can pass on and I've already passed it on to my son. But if I'm not there, yeah, flint and steel, um, they can learn on their own, right? Teach them how to read, they can learn forever. Uh, water, paracord, change of clothes. Um, shoes. Shoes. Yeah. Candy. Candy. I mean, it seems basic, but candy. Because your blood sugar may get low. You may be having the worst day of your life, probably. And a little piece <laughs> of candy that's going to bring you joy for a couple minutes, it's worth the piece of candy. Now, <laughs> right. Now, that's all I carry in my bag and some personal protection stuff, but that doesn't matter. Um, we work with the homeless on um, one day a week, and the number one thing that they ask for is shoes because um, the shoes that are made today are made so cheaply. They come in and they're flopping open and everything, so we're either gluing shoes because we're going to be walking a whole lot more. So having the extra pair of shoes is a big deal. So 10 years ago, I was working with uh, one of our friends was a Blue Springs police officer and he brought out a pair of boots. And I'm like, how much you spend on those? He goes, $150. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna spend $150 on a pair of boots. And he goes, I bet you would if you wore them all day long. I said, deal. 10 years later, guess what I'm wearing? $150 pair of boots. They last me for four years. Currently, right now, in today's time, hopefully Heavenly Father will prolong their life because we won't have replacements. But, you know, it, boots, a good pair of hiking boots if you don't want to wear full nine-inch tall boots. Um, you just need to find what's comfortable for you. I know he carries a hydro kit with him everywhere. Um, I carry Quick Trip iced tea, <laughs> um, water bottles, just everybody has their level of preparation. How much food do you carry? I just carry a couple of things. Just a couple granola bars. Literally, that's all that's in my bag. And some bottled water. Right. Well, with my 72 hour kit or with my, with my bag, I'm on the move. I'm not waiting around. So at that point, it's if the world gets crazy, um, money won't be a thing. When? when it gets crazy, it won't be a thing. So you may have to stop at a convenience store and grab something and just keep walking. It won't be you go up to the counter and you pay. There's going to a lot's going to be happening, so you may have to go in, grab something, and keep going, just because of the way things are going. I carry cash with me because in the first couple hours, people are still going to think money's a thing, so you can pay in cash and be like, keep the change, you take what you need to, and you go, so that way you already have food. So how my 72-hour pack is set is it's all in a bag right now but it all can go on my belt within three minutes and I can be on the walk. I have a backpack, I can fill it with food or water and just keep going. So I don't have all of it in my bag when I'm actually walking, I can fit it all on my belt. Go ahead. You're probably gonna be, conservatively speaking, consuming 3,000 or 4,000 calories a day. So over a three day period. Yeah. A it's bad okay. idea to have, say, something like beef jerky. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Correct. In my vehicle, I've got more food for the 72-hour level. Um, at our house is where we have our storage that if we were headed somewhere and we knew something was happening, we would take that from there. But just while I'm out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, like, if something were to happen now and we still had vehicles. Come talk. Oh, I'm sorry. So right now, if we still had vehicles, our first stop is, I mean, we'd grab all this stuff, we're heading to our truck, we're out of here, right? Our number two plan is 
we grab this stuff, it goes all in my backpack, we go to the vehicle, grab Diane's backpack, Maverick's backpack, whatever bottles of water we can carry, whatever else in the truck that we need or think we need. And then we're on the run. Um, or not on the run, on the move. Um, but everybody should know people's houses along the way. Um, like to your house, if you mm -hmm. were going home from here, you could be like, I need water. So you could stop at, you know, this family Joe's member. house. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. So if not, I, yeah, I'd work on learning where people live so that you would have places to stop if you have a long journey from wherever you are. Uh, one thing that is on the list, and these again, just a suggestion, not a full list, is your scriptures, Bible, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants. They do make pocket-sized ones. This is takes a lot of room in your bag. Um, it's heavier, so there's options. And then obviously, it, well, not obviously, um, we collect these, so it's not just the if I have to leave this behind, I know I have more, and that this should be on my heart already anyway. Yeah, for some time I've been offering to our group um, to have get-togethers where we vacuum seal stuff up, and besides food, I've been putting it out there. Uh, you can vacuum seal up your scriptures mm -hmm. if you have extra copies. Seal them up. Uh, you, know, you hear people over the years talking about, oh, I'll bury these supplies in the ground and I will have them later. Going, well, the same people that would make an organized approach to take your supplies, those scriptures are absolutely a target. So if you're going to be stashing, you know, beans, bullets, and band aids, you need your scriptures set aside. And not to mention, how many people are going to be coming in? that have never seen scriptures before or might be saying, I really miss mine, I wish I had a copy. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the point of the unity, right? That's the, is that still, on? there it is. So that's the whole point of the unity, right? When people start to gather, they're gonna see an organized group of people that are worshiping our Heavenly Father they're going to want to know why they're still alive because everybody else is dead. I mean, prepare. You guys need to be preparing to see death. A thousand will fall, 10,000 will fall on your left side, I think it says, and then it will not come up nigh thee. So. You need to be prepared to see death. And a lot of the preparation that you need to make is mental. I mean, we talked about spiritual, we talked about physical. You've got to be mentally prepared. Because um, the Lord can provide. Right. Maybe the next house right. has the food that you need or, um, or whatever. So extra ideas for training. And I put that training in parentheses. Have you guys seen the Red Dawn movies? Both of them? Okay, anything, I shouldn't say anything, um, and I say mental training because, pull, okay, the lady that got ran over by a truck, I'm not expecting Debbie, and I'm, I don't know you very well, so forgive me, um, I'm not expecting her to stop at that scene and walk up to the body and be able to see blood draining out of this woman's face and for her to hold it together. Is that a fair statement? Okay. I know she couldn't do it. And we've dealt with death firsthand. I don't know if he could do that because he hadn't, hasn't had enough experience in life yet. Right? I do. I, I know you deal with things pretty hard, but um, but the, we need to be prepared to see, not see that scene, but be prepared to deal with death and be able to move on with, yes, it's tragic. Yes, you need to talk to somebody. Yes, you need to go cry and beat the stick against the tree. Whatever you need to do to release that anxiety and anger and 
frustration and whatever you need to release. But we're going to have to deal with that. So get mentally prepared for it. Um, Annie does. It's okay, he'll get it. Okay, right now I'm obsessed with Isaiah and the Book of Mormon. Uh Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a better training for what might happen than to read those prophecies and try to understand what it's saying to us. Right. And Helaman is uh, (laughs) plays out the Book of Mormon story as well. Absolutely. Also the. And also the stuff from Mike Ballantyne that he just sent out, right. like reading over it. And Which Mike Ballantyne sounds an awful lot like Isaiah to me. Right. Yes. Yeah. And our uh, Sunday school is also doing Isaiah. I think she is spot on. <laughs> we, we've had good talks. So. Uh, read the book one second after that deals with an EMP happening or a nuclear explosion and then how the community reacts to that. Um, that's a it's a quick read, but it's a very very good read. It's a fictional story, but at the same time, it kind of gets your mind in that what if it makes you ask questions. And then the other one that I would recommend for like a scorched earth type scenario would be uh, Desmond Dawes. What's that Cliff movie that he's on in oh. <clears throat> Hexaw Ridge. Ridge? That's it. If you haven't seen that one yet, prepare yourself because that would be really good real life. As close to real life as you're going to get without being involved in it. Well, yeah. Yes. But do you realize that people will be fleeing here to not take sword against their neighbor? So at some point, we won't have to worry about that. Right. But there's that little bit at, of the, at the beginning where we have to prepare yes. the kingdom after it's been cleansed, and, and then you know we have a place to go for safety. So. so underneath the extra ideas, there's a small paragraph. In the middle of it, it says, the preparations you make may not be for you. Be okay with that. If you have to leave items behind... Or if you die, the Lord needed you to gather and prepare it for others to continue with the work of the Lord in building the kingdom. So, like our location, if we're not there and it's a bug out scenario, I guarantee there's probably going to be supplies left in the house. Mm-hmm. Clothes, toilet paper, Dawn dish soap, go get it. Yeah, right there. Thank you, brother. Annie and I have to go, but I have a few words, and that is at our house, we have enough water supply to supply 50 people two gallons a day for one month. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't rain, that's it. Super. And we have enough food for 50 people for uh, for, for a month. And we're within walking distance of here. And another thing is, Howard came up on a truck that was on fire, and since then, Annie and I have put fire extinguishers in our trunk, Mm -hmm. and one of our church members back when we had a lot of snow, he had a shovel and ice melt, so we have ice melt, shovel, fire extinguisher, and a first aid kit. Yep. And I think, I was wondering if um, someday we couldn't have a class on first aid. And... I know there's a lot of people that are against firearms, but I have one and I have ammunition, but it's not for self-defense, but it's for, I'm a honey, I hunt sure. fish and everything. And I was thinking, you know, everybody ought to know the safety of a gun and how to use one and, mm-hmm. and whatever. So yep. that'd be, you know, if everybody was, we had classes on, you know, stuff like that. So for those that didn't hear, he's talking about first aid class. Uh, some type of firearm training just for safety wise um, for hunting for hunting 
you know, be self-sufficient. I mean, in the next in the next session, you're gonna or next section, it says, don't be surprised. Be ready for. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, using physical weapons. And what I mean by don't be surprised by or be ready for is that there are people in the church in the restoration that have been called to and or work in law enforcement that have to for their job, but then also have been called by the Heavenly Father to stand in the gap for people that don't want to bear arms or can't or can't so don't be surprised if you see diane <laughs> if you see somebody you know that usually wears a suit and tie show up with a rifle and a in body armor just don't be surprised just know that it's not because they're angry or upset or whatever with you. That's not the case at all. Heavenly Father has them in a task and a role that he needs filled, and that's who he's got filling it, right? Um, when tornadoes happen, don't be surprised when shaking comes because it sounds like a rolling freight train and your whole house is moving even though it doesn't go anywhere, right? Uh, earthquakes. Don't be surprised. Violent storms hit when fire street sweeps through, when the economy fails, the dollar is no longer used. Um, be practicing using your spiritual weapons already as members because all of us have that authority. All of us have, or all of us enlisted in the army of the Lord. <laughs> we all said, yes, we'll go where you want us to go right so it's it's kind of the final rally call when money is no longer used and you need to trade for something uh, don't trade your children don't do that <laughs> don't do that and don't be surprised when Christ returns because he's coming guaranteed I'm going to pop back up. Uh, we missed one sentence that I feel like is pretty mm -hmm. crucial. Um, it's still on the back. It's it's under the physical. It's, it says if a mob of 10 comes, but it's two lines below that. Many will be willing to kill for water, food, or beds. 23%, and this was back in 2020. Meds. Uh, medications. Medications, yeah. yeah. Um, are on psychotropic meds. 23% back in 2020. So those people that need meds to just even function, um, they're not gonna have their meds. After 30, 60 days, they're, all their meds will be gone. So that's, that's a fourth at that time. I bet it's worse now after, after COVID. So maybe a third of people. So something to deeply consider um, the environment and obviously, those who have had prescriptions for heart meds or insulin, I think the amount of people are not, that aren't gonna get meds, that either will be needing a healing or will pass because they didn't have their meds or they're going to be willing to kill to get their meds. So there, there's that whole factor. But, um, any questions? Um, I'll answer. 21 years. <laughs> He's 21. <laughs> so when I was nine years old, I would sit in the congregation and we had ceiling fans that spun above, above the people. So I would, in my mind, put a scenario, because I was bored in church, <laughs> that ceiling fan being disconnected from the light fixture and falling and, and landing in the crowd, right? How do you deal with that? <laughs> so I'm 45 minus eight, I do the math, 37, okay. 
So, but really hardcore or really understand, I guess not hardcore. For Diane and I, it started um, just about nine months after Maverick was born. Well, we got married in 1999, and there was the whole Y2K thing. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't so that the... That could be some of it. I that, that was some of it, but we really got started because of a camp that I went to where um, we were both there. Maverick was there as a young man, young man, still, still in diapers. Um, the camp was invaded by uh, what I found out to be was Legion... I found that out about six months later. Uh, so it was spiritually invaded by Legion, and he brought an army. And it was three columns wide. Um, the, ar the columns were about 15 feet wide, and they were just marching into this campground to disrupt camp. And there were three pastors, two directors, handful of staff, um, so we, the pastors were at spiritual war for four days with about six hours of sleep. Um, after that experience, that, sh that shook me. I mean, Heavenly Father used that to teach me, but through that, I was like, why did you have me go through that? He goes, I'm, I was on the staff. I was the pastor. He was four noble. Um, Mm -mm. Uh, it was it's spiritual. Crazy. It wasn't physical. Well, we could see them. Spiritually. Spiritually, we could see them. Um, or you could. Yeah. That's where I learned that I had the gift of discerning of spirits. Um, and then after that, in much fasting and prayer, I, f I was asking, I was like, why did you put me through that situation? Well, not only are you my not only are you a spiritual warrior but you're going to have to be a physical warrior as well and in order to do that I need you to go do X, X, and X and I need you to go get trained with X, X, and X and I need you to understand X, X, and X. And I say those because not everybody wants to hear that, right? So, so over the last 20 years, I've done that. And through that, we've had the ability to create friendships with like-minded people to set up a a bug out location for our safety of our family and for others that are coming in and coming gathering into the center place and through that understanding of of what he needed me to do he also showed me three other locations that I would be at physically physically armed and spiritually armed in protection of that location um, those two of them are here locally one's the temple lot one is a uh, Camp Donovan and one is my friend's farm up north of Cameron by Cameron those three locations he showed me 20 years ago that I would be standing at on guard on point in protection of those people gathering and so when, when somebody says, well, we don't need firearms in Zion, I said, you're right. We'll need them beforehand, right? Um, and again, not everybody's called to that duty, right? Um, some are nurses. Others are cooks. Right. Some may be out in the field farming or making clothes. Scholars, Scholars teachers. So to answer your question, Hardcore for, not hard, hard, we've been prepping for 20 years, pretty substantially, um, and learning as much as we can, and trying to build a small group of people that 
when something happens, we're there to help other people. Other people. So you're not just preparing for yourselves, you're also preparing for others. Any other questions? I would highly suggest, if you haven't already done it, you, are, you guys are already working together on the work days, right? Um, our, our small group, what we did is we picked a date and we said at two o'clock, there's gonna be this happen. Get to the farm as fast as possible. It was, we have. So we have. It was a fake scenario. So like, let's say, let's use a fake scenario. Let's say two o'clock next Wednesday, EMP hits, everything's done. It would Go. be a mock scenario for you guys to do what you needed to, get to your place, and be ready. How long did it take you to get there? Did you get all your supplies? Did you forget something? So you run through it, so you practice for when the real thing happens. Because there will be more anxiety, more stress, other things happening. It may be at 3 o'clock in the night. And... That may be a scenario as well. And your group just practices like, hey, fake scenario, go. Do you remember doing that? Yeah, I okay, do. Okay, good. Yeah. So when we did that, let me give you the responses that happened. And just our family, okay? <laughs> I went into checklist mode. Mm -hmm. Go get this, 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 and this. I'm barking orders to Maverick and Zurich. They're running around the house getting things gathered. They're bringing them to the living room. I'm quickly shoving them in the truck because our scenario had vehicles running. Um, and, right, correct. Right. Yeah, we didn't do anything. So that was my reaction. I did make the checklist, but I was you, the one at the kitchen table you, crying. You did make... <laughs> You did, she did make the checklist, it was which is fine. Like clearing out certain parts of the house or like, you know, this cabinet had all the medical, you know, like getting it all out and like the hurry, the haste and everybody running. And, and, and this was a mock trial, but I emotionally <laughs> was like, oh. So you guys know the fight, flight, freeze, right? She froze. Yeah, fiddle, I love it. <laughs> yeah, she froze. She literally but sat that is totally at the kitchen not table. Not my response anymore because I have now mentally prepared to handle it. So as much as I can, I guess. <laughs> so so now it's no longer a mental freeze. It's like we've already went through that process of I have to leave the baby pictures behind, the wedding photos, yeah. the house that I painted. The quilt the great grandma left me, all of those things. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So that's now. Since then, we've had all kinds of things happen to us, and it's just like none of. As much as we like having those pictures. It doesn't matter. My kids are going to be in the kingdom with me. I'll see them. Right? So Heavenly Father's preparing each one of us to some degree. His okay. response was just do whatever Dad said. Yes. Pretty much. Do you have a question? Go ahead. <laughs> Can you see very soon our two groups doing something cooperative to help each other? I think we would be willing to. We, we, I don't know about the group. Of our group will. Yeah, the I mean. The rest of the group, probably not. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to speak for others. Yeah, it's hard to tell. But what, possibly. What, what about real goodwill toward each other? Like, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Telling yeah. each other about each other without divulging maybe <laughs> secrets we want to keep. Like, right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, kind Let me have this, sorry. Um, one of the, one of the rules for me is to, 
I mean, I'll have my home base location, which will be that bug out location for us. But then part of my responsibility is going out to get people. And Outside to, of Zion. To bring them in, right? So knowing where you are right now, that helps me because that gives me a way station. And then just down the road from you, I've got three other way stations that are north of you on H Highway that are all church related that I've already built. Well, one of them is my one of my training friends. Um, so and you have the whole remnant group out there off of H Highway. There's a handful. Yeah, 10 or 20 people bought five, 10 acres out there and they all. So I know several of the people that live in that location and they're across the street from um, across the street from my other way station. So there are, and I've got farms in Cameron and Mayville that I can go to. I've got friends down in Pleasant Hill. You all have friends. You just need to think about, you know, helping each other out. If you haven't have done the this, conversation. <laughs> we, we put all of our church members on a map and we have it at the church, posted at the church, and then two of the other people have a copy of it. So that way, if somebody says, hey, I need you to go to Joe's house. Yeah, Joe's house. I know where Joe is, and I can go help him. And with our banners that we created, whoever wanted a banner, we made a banner for them, and they hang it in their window, so I can a, see it. It's just a quilted banner that the yeah, sewing, about, a sewing group that Jackie is in that um, we made 30 or 40 of them. And so um, just, it looks like decoration in the window. Yeah, it's a all. window decoration, and depending on which way it's hanging, that tells me they need help or not. But... Our group knows what that means, but for someone else to look at it, it's just a decoration. So, yeah. Right, yeah. and I can see that from with binoculars from 200 yards away. I don't have to be on the road. Yeah. All these people that, that you would uh, be picking up, they've already contributed stores at the bug out location? No. Have they been encouraged to do that? Nope, that's just Heavenly Father sending me to go get these people that are stranded somewhere. But we're assuming and relying on the Lord that he will multiply, um, I mean. The provisions. Yeah. This is getting maybe a little too specific, but I'm curious. This is getting a little too specific perhaps, but I'm curious. So uh, the banner, you got <clears throat> two sides mm -hmm. and four corners. Mm -hmm. Actually, eight, because you could hang it, hang it square or diagonally. So you got okay. 16 positions. And the design we put on it indicates We're pretty well. That's four. So the four sides yeah. mean something, but you could totally And then the do opposite something side something means something. Yeah. Like right. The so you got, actually, you've got, you got. 16 separate messages you could uh -huh. you could put out we real easily. We didn't make it that difficult. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, so, awesome. I, so I imagine one of them is need help. Another one is... One, one is I'm okay. Yeah. We're Regular. okay. Uh -huh. Number two is we need provisions. Mm -hmm. Number three is we need medical, I think. Yeah. Number four is uh, enemy close and then, or in the house. Yeah. Then. And then number five is we bugged out, which is number they five is the banner is gone. Banner with them. And maybe one would be we have provisions and supplies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. A extra provisions That's, and supplies. They're okay. Yeah. Okay. They're doing fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, and, we, and we gave them a card that has that information on it. So the way the banner's hanging, I know that you're okay. Or the enemy's inside. If you tell me the enemy's closer inside, that's a different response from me or the, the, the go team. That's a different response than it is than I need supplies, right? And that's where I'm saying it's, it's this mindset of 
don't be surprised. And Jonathan, I'm going to use you. Don't be surprised when you see Jonathan show up with a rifle and his his uh, his vest on, right? Don't don't be surprised if you see Woody show up with a hunting rifle. Don't be surprised when you see Debbie show up and she's she's fully geared out. Well, it's sweet Debbie, right? Mother. Right, right. Uh, Mama bears are scary. Mama <laughs> bears are the worst bears. In a good way. And the best. So it's just, don't be surprised. And, and the other part of that is, be prepared. yeah, and if you see that, don't automatically jump to judgment against that person that you know, right? Because their calling is different than your calling, right? So it sounds like there needs to be some really good communication between or decisions on your behalf on like what you're going to do, who is your community, if, if this is going to work out um, with this group, if it's so spread out or you've got little hubs that you're like, as people are traveling in, they can stop here, go here, go here. And maybe you make a line that goes all the way into the a temple lot or, you know, I don't know how you can organize this, but I would probably have a powwow pretty soon and, and make a plan The <laughs> one, running out of time. The other one thing that we did is we came up with a list of rules. Like, Ten Commandments. like we have, yeah, we've got the scriptures, right? But we have people coming into the city that may not know the scriptures and they need a place to stay, right? Rules for your house or rules whatever. for your people location, are going to stay with you. right? So maybe you don't have a bug out community, but you have people that just wander in out on your farm out there, right? And you're like, "What are you doing here?" Well, I'm trying to get to Zion. Well, it's that way. You can't stay here. Well, I need a place to stay for the. Okay, fine. These are the rules. This is what you're expected to do in my house. Right, <laughs> in, in the creek. <laughs> There's anyway, so so that way it's clear and upfront. If you can't abide by these rules, you can't stay here, and that conversation happens immediately away from the house. Mm -hmm. Right, so like you have that 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 driveway that you can see somebody coming down to the house, right? So you're cutting them off a third up the, high, up the road, right? Or as soon as they turn onto the driveway, you're stopping them and saying, what are you doing? How can I help you? What, what are you thinking? Absolutely. Had a friend of mine who had a dream. So you're going to do it, God. And in the dream, he had three people. It was it was grid down scenario. Chaos was going everywhere. He had three people walk down his driveway. He met them before they got to the house. And he goes, "What? What are you doing? We don't know who you are." Well, we're looking for a, a place to stay. It looks like a pretty good place, and we're just we're travelers. We need. Okay, well, what skills do you have? And he kind of goes down this list in his dream. He goes, well, we don't need any help with that. We don't need any help with that. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't. Yeah, we do need help in that. So do you, and it was security related. He goes, well, I'll just sit out and watch, watch the cars and make sure nobody comes in or whatever. And he goes, so do you have any way to help protect? Well, no, I don't have anything. Do you have any extra? Right? So he's like, sure, I've got extra. He hands him a piece of equipment. It's immediately tried to use it against him. Okay? They had blanks. He, he gave them an inoperable weapon. Discernment. Then the, the statement of, 
you're no longer welcome here after taking care of such a person. Eliminate the threat. The guy was a threat. There were two girls with him. Here's a can of food. Here's a bottle of water. If we see you again, you no longer survive. That sounds harsh. Where's the charity? The charity? There was. We gave him a can of food and water. Right? They're still in Zion. Just the, not in that spot of Zion. They've already shown. they've already shown their true colors. <laughs> right, right. So th that was a dream. That was just a way for him to work through a scenario that he'd been mulling over, right? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're not promoting that you do that. But that's just what was in that dream. Book Mormon reference comes to mind where the people are told that the Lord will not allow if he's if he's using a farmer as an example he will not allow livestock is like you you wouldn't let your neighbor's livestock hang out with your livestock and feed it at your place you're like no you need to be over right. there you don't you you can't be here you do not belong here he said it's the exact same thing with with this scenario the people proved which side they belonged on is like you you cannot be here you you have to go and with the the testimony from uh that one book about the rings of fire where yep. people would be driven by the spirit of god from zion because they did not belong there uh, we we can't we can't go with a different decision making process than what god himself has already told us this this is what i'm going to do mm -hmm. you you if you do not belong here and that's a that's a choice they're making that's not well we didn't like the shoes you were wearing us no that was your choices you made right right so uh the police department they do all kinds of extensive training and one of the things they especially with their swat team they train their swat team that if there's any threat to the team, that threat's eliminated, right? Um, it sounds harsh, but when you're operating with pure evil, either God converts them immediately when they see you, <laughs> or he's put you in that position to take care of a threat. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can still right. So, um, when you, huh? He's got a question. Oh, sorry, Jonathan. I just recently heard a quote. If you are a wicked man, be careful that you never meet a truly good man, for he will not hesitate to destroy you. I think we're done hesitating. <laughs> Did you have something, Susan? Yes, when I uh, was reading through Valentine's, he kind of gave us a warning that the mobs would come, and when they came, they would literally clear out everything you have. And so, in my position, um, we could go either way. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. supplied uh, to do either, either mm -hmm. way. Um, but I also, in my heart, I tried to decide, you know, am I able to draw down? And so the, uh, the alternative is the discernment is that you offer to feed them and they can come for food, but they may not be able to reside there. Mm -hmm. And that you, you feed that stranger because if they take your supplies, it will be destroyed and gone within a week. Mm -hmm. yes. If I'm allowed to use it and feed portionally, then it will last for months or indefinitely because of the Lord's favor. 
And so yeah. sometimes there's some negotiation. You can't come on to the property because this, this property is considered holy. And it's, but we will bring, you know, a, a portioned meal down uh, You're to share. Nicer than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all right. Awesome. Well, I, there's different ways you'll handle it. Yeah. yeah. And because I've got, I've worked for DOD a lot of years, mm -hmm. um, the harder line has, was actually at the forefront before. And now I think I'm going to give a little bit of mercy first sure. before judgment. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not the leader of our group. <laughs> also, it's the spiritual discernment as well because there may be a threat, but it may not be a threat for you. It may be for someone else. Or um, you may not have to actually do anything physical to them. You could just say, God, deal with it, and they fall. And not, like, die, but go unconscious or faint. Because... Look at Laban. Yep. Yes, look at Laban. Or, like, we've had experiences where we have casted stuff out of people and they have just fallen to the ground because there was so much in them once we got it out they had hardly anything left so they just fell that may be what has to happen and it may go instantaneous so it's also spiritual as well it's not all physical so you'll have to have discernment and stuff Yes. Correct. Right. You're not. You're no. Not. Which is why I think he gave me the discerning of spirits first yes. and then told me to go get ready for the physical. Yes. Yep. So it's mainly spiritual and then physical. So that's why we put spiritual first and then physical second on our paper as well. So any other questions? I have a few. Yes. Uh, we've uh, got we got quite a few to give away. To pass out in a minute. The three yeah. and one, or the ready and three, or the scriptures in the three and one. Well, I don't think that is all together, but small versions of it are easier to carry on. You oh. might try prices um, for the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants. I think they had. We just picked up. It wasn't our inspired version, but we just picked up a new and not a new one. A, New Testament, Old Testament at the thrift store in a pocket version. Yeah, so you can find them just like the around. Gideon's handbook, the little Gideon's Bibles. I mean, yeah. Okay, I have a couple, a few sentences. Um, we're in haste. I think you should quickly, I'd almost say this week, but I don't want to be like crazy about it, but like we're in haste. You should probably hurry with your decisions. Make your final preparations, gather, make your phone calls, gather your, your thing, things, and because the timeline is unknown, so you'd rather be prepared than be unprepared and knew that you needed to be prepared. <laughs> that would be absolutely horrible. Um, we were all made for such a time as this. I love uh, Esther 4. Um, of all the times um, people have been created, we are we are the lucky ones to be here in this end time to to bring it in um you just each of us have um our own missions so maybe yours isn't to gather up stuff so um maybe a portion of this was for you maybe it's for something you're supposed to share with somebody so taking consideration uh we just threw a whole bunch of stuff at you, so, um, but maybe only a small part is for you. And we pray that God be with you. Yeah. So there are some tomatoes up here on the table that are to share if you want some fresh tomatoes. Um, we've got some examples up here on the table for you to look at if you want to. We have extra copies of the sheet that all of you have. If you want to take a few, you can. Um, there's ready in three documents, so. There's this one, this one, and this one. 
And one more way down there. One on the way in. And, oh. um, so there's four way down there. Oh, <laughs> I'm already holding that one. <laughs> and this one here. So there's a couple copies of those. So there's four of those. And those are just, those are higher level. I mean, we came in a little closer, but those are very, just have a plan, stuff like that. So, um, did you want to end with a prayer? We've got a couple things. Okay. Then we, the floor is yours, sir. We're out of the way. Thank you, you guys. Sorry for Sorry taking up a while. Are you wanting to have the live stream turned off for your next conversation? Did you hear that? Could you shut that off, please? That's all right. Thank you for watching online. And thank you for streaming it, too. So thank you.